Hey, hola, my friends. I hope all is fine and well with you and yours. First off, I believe we just crossed 4.2 million views. And thank you, thank you, thank you, every single one of you, for all of your support and continued support. Please spread the word, share the page. Don't forget, um, find us on Facebook at YouTube. Um, pardon me, at, um, I said YouTube. At Together We Grow on Facebook. Together We Grow AZ on Facebook. Um, you know we're here on YouTube at Together We Grow. And also our website, TogetherWeGrowAZ.com. Don't forget us at Together We Grow uh, at C2. I believe we have a store up there. But guys, I got something awesome to talk to you about. Check it out. Dun, dun, dun. Now, it's been a couple of weeks, I think since we looked out here and if you guys want to go back in the videos you can and you'll see the growth on the winter greens we put out here for the upper grow bed now um, I got a little bit of clarification that's tatsoi that's tatsoi those are collard greens those are collard greens that's cabbage yeah this that's purple ish and there's this thing now, <laughs> pardon me, I always tell you guys, most of the joy is out, like 90% of the fun is really not spending too much time on trying to re remember or recall what something is, just enjoying the experience of being out here with it. Now, I bring, I wanted to point these out to you because um, recently our night temperatures have dropped to about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe it's about 6.11 degrees, 6.11 degrees Celsius, just pretty cold. Now, this is a start that I moved out here from in the house. And there's two reasons I want to show you this. Number one, I want you to look at the algae on top of this grow cube. Which is not a problem to this degree, but I want you to keep this in mind because I'm going to answer a question that we're often asked. Look at this growth root, the root on the growths. This has been sitting out here for two days. There were no outgoing roots, um, outgrowing on roots two days ago. So just crystal clear roots. Been out here for two days. I didn't bury it or cover it with lava rock because I wanted you to see the power of aquaponics. Because the temperature of our water from the fish um, tank hasn't dropped below 70 degrees. These roots, even though exposed to the 43 deg um, degree air, the um, 6.11 degrees Celsius air, the roots are doing just fine. Now I am going to go ahead and bury this, just cover it up with the rocks because there's really no need to have it out anymore after this. And just look at how easy that is, guys. Bam. That's set. I want to say set it and forget it, but I think that's patented. So just set it. And it's that easy to do it in aquaponics. Well, remember that algae we were looking at? You know, a question we're often asked of is um, how can we deal with algae? I have a grow bed system similar to your Charles. I use lava rocks just like you, Charles. And regardless of your substrate, that point doesn't matter. I'm going to show you guys a couple of tricks to try to prevent that algae in the first place. First off, let's talk algae. Ooh, green, slimy stuff, right? Well, where does algae naturally grow? Naturally grows in just um, in natural waterways, and it grows because it doesn't feed off of anything like per se. It just eats off of broken down waste, especially from fish or any other thing that you might have going through your water system that it could find as food or a nutritious source. Some call it a bacteria. Some call it um, a plant. Who knows? We just can all agree that it's algae. How about that? Now, the reason why you see algae here is because you have the food source coming from the fish water in the tank and you have the water to the things that algae need to grow. But what's the primary thing that algae needs to grow? It needs the sun. It needs the sun to come in contact with whatever surface it's on while it's in free flowing water and getting nutrients. Well, why do you have algae here, Charles, and not here? Why do you have some algae here, Charles, just a little bit? and not there. Well, the tank explains it itself. If you look at your grow bed, the grow beds are usually about 12 to 14 inches, all right, on an IBC split tote. Depends on what size you get it cut. But my emptying valve, my outlet valve going from the main tank, going from the prime, the um, first grow bed tank and then to the lower grow bed tank, and any grow bed tanks I would have been going after this, look at where my water line is. Look at the top of the IBC tote, from the top of the IBC tote to where the top where this, this um, pipe is at is about four inches. Now, I have about between two and four inches of lava rocks on top of my grow bed between the actual bottom of the water source and where the plant's roots would be. You can see that right there. It's pretty cool, huh? There's the top of where our water comes at. And I know it's hard to tell, but yeah, here's the top of the actual grow bed. 
Keeping that in mind can prevent algae in the first place. And that's the idea. So now if you think of that concept, I explain to you like why this is why you see algae on a riverbank. This is why you see it on um, on shores on an ocean even. So think of this system that we have exactly as that. This works just as nature would work. Under the ground, it just, just like under, under the ground, if you would have um, in your yard, you would have worms. We have a thriving colony of red wiggler worms underneath our substrate. We had an incredible visitor today. Peace out to my man Vaughn from um, Kentucky and um, BF. You can check him out on Instagram at Kentucky and BF, but he's a Kentucky and background gard- gardener, uh, Kentuckiana um, background gardener, and this dude is super awesome. He came out here, he hung out today. We got to talking about the red wiggler worms, and I actually pulled up. I'll show you guys this, my friends. This cucumber, the final cucumber that we had going up there. You can see the roots are still white, even though they're all dried out now. And he was amazed when he saw the amount of red wiggler worms that were in that. That's pretty cool, right? They're happy. They're doing their own thing in this environment, even on our lower grow bed. I actually moved this hole. This is where the cucumber was. And I moved this out the way so that you could see just how deep that water goes in here. And this is the substrate on top. So this is why you see dried lava stones, dried lava rocks, and not wet ones. In my opinion, for a constant flow system, which is what I have, you do not want to have your system being flooded up to the top. You want to try to prevent as much contact with the sun to your substrate top as possible. That's just from my experience. And guys, um, while we're doing this right here, I wanted to give a special shout out. Um, to two people. Number one is Dr. James Letch, who without him, I have no idea where I'd be on this. And the other person, I mean this with all my heart, is the only one, well, one of only a few people who I actually tell you to go to in order to learn how to do this correctly. It's one of the people who taught me, and that's Rob Gray. Please check him out on YouTube. The guy's world famous, but um, to me, he's Rob the friend. And he's super, super awesome. He's just been helping me out for years. Guys, you got this. Don't ever think that there's only one way to do this. It's limitless. All you have to do is plant that first seed so that together we'll grow. Peace and blessings, my friends. Have a great one.